To say that the cross, emblazoned with the papal coat of arms and set up by the indulgence preachers, is equal in worth to the cross of Christ is blasphemy. The bishops, pastors, and theologians who permit such talk to be spread among the people must be held accountable for it. This unbridled preaching of indulgences makes it difficult even for the learned to rescue the reverence which is due the Pope from slander and from shrewd questions of the laity. Okay, shrewd questions, who cares? Slander, though. You yourself, Luther, are doing a ton of slander. Not in the very beginning, but once you get to like 40, man, you're just... Seriously, you're, you're just slandering. You're doing a lot of slander in here. Okay. Maybe it's liable because it's written. I don't know. Such as, why does not the Pope empty purgatory for the sake of holy love and the dire need of the souls that are there if he redeems an infinite number of souls for the sake of miserable money with which to build a church? The former reasons could not be more just the latter is most trivial. No, a church is necessary and it costs money to pay the builders. And the builders aren't going to work for free. Again, why are funeral and anniversary masses for the dead continued? And why does he not return or permit the... <laughs> permit the... Is that the next one? Okay. The withdrawal of the endowments funded for them because it is wrong to pray for the redeemed. Pray for everyone. Pray for those in heaven. Pray for those on earth. Just pray. Pray. Luther, just pray. 84. Again, what is this new piety of God and the Pope that for a consideration of money they permit a person who is impious and their enemy to buy out of purgatory the pious soul of a friend of God, and do not rather because of the need of that pious and beloved soul free it for pure love's sake. 85. Again, why are the penitential canons long since abrogated and dead in fact and through disuse, now satisfied by the granting of indulgences as though they were still alive and in force. Okay, Mike. Mike Winger. Mike. Martin Luther, your hero, the guy who without which you would not be a Protestant because it wouldn't exist, that guy understands that old doctrine that is no longer being forced as dogma can be abrogated and can be left to disuse, can just be ignored like limbo, like limbo is today. This is just a non-issue for Catholics. It's like, eh, limbo, whatever. It was a thing we once believed. Now we're not really sure about it. We don't talk about it anymore. The fact that he can understand this, but you, when you read it, can't understand that. I don't, I don't get, I don't, what's going on with you, Mike? Come on. Even Luther understood this, and Luther has shown himself at least he's acting like he's not the brightest ball from the box. Why are the penitential canons long since abrogated and dead in fact and through disuse now satisfied by the granting of indulgences as though they were still alive and in force? Again, why does not the Pope, whose wealth is today greater than the wealth of the richest Crassus, build this one basilica of St. Peter with his own money rather than with the money of the poor believers. Again, what does the Pope reduce or grant to those who by perfect contrition already have the right to full remission and blessings? Again, what greater blessing could come to the church than if the Pope 
nor to bestow these remissions and blessings on every believer a hundred times a day, as he now does but once. Because the Pope seeks the salvation of souls rather than money by his indulgences, why does he suspend the indulgences and pardons previously granted when they have equally efficacy? To repress these very sharp arguments of the laity by force alone and not to resolve them by giving reasons is to expose the church and the pope to the ridicule of their enemies and make Christians unhappy. If therefore indulgences were preached in accordance with the spirit and intention of the pope, all these doubts would be readily resolved. Indeed, they would not exist. No, they still exist. The doubt's kind of how that works. Away with all those prophets who say to the people of Christ, peace, peace, and there be no peace. Blessed be all those prophets who say to the people of Christ, cross, cross, and there is no cross. Christians should be be exhorted to be diligent in following Christ, their head, through penalties, death, and hell. And thus be confident of entering into heaven through many tribulations, rather than through the false security of peace. How can you defend this? Come on. Come on. Come on. You're not ignorant. Uh, Mike Winger, you, you, you've claimed to have read a ton of Catholic and Mormon and... I don't know, I'm trying to think of some other religion you may have read. I don't think you've read the Quran. But you've claimed to have read other denominational writings, uh, different writings from Luther to, to um, uh, John Calvin. You've read these guys. You've, you've heard their theology. You've seen, you say you've read the Catechism and the Council of Trent. I don't know if you've read Vatican II, but whatever. What? How can you not see that what he's saying is wrong? I, he has this whole thing where he's just being anti-Semitic. Are you going to defend that? I don't think you will. I don't. I honestly don't think you will defend his anti-Semitism, Mike or James White. I, I just James White, um, Alan Parr, Mike Winger. Read those ninety-five theses and defend defend them. Defend that one horrible one. It's it's just I don't I don't see it. I don't I don't see it. I don't see this as defensible. He had some good points in the beginning, but out of ninety-five theses, he only had like three or four that could be universally held as correct. I don't know why why I make this guy your inspiration. Peace, like, and subscribe. Anybody who actually watched through this three-parter, it was supposed to be one video, but apparently it reads slow. Have a good night.